Gojo and Sukuna are by far the strongest characters in Jujutsu Kaisen, but how do they fare in the much stronger universe of Chainsaw Man? Can they even keep up with some of these stronger devils? Well, it's actually more complicated than it may seem. So today, we are going to be matching up Gojo and Sukuna against the five strongest characters in Chainsaw Man to see how they do. The first strongest devil we're going to be matching Gojo and Sukuna up against is the Doll Devil. The Doll Devil is dangerous for two main reasons. First of all, she has the ability to turn any human she touches into a doll. These dolls can also turn people into dolls, meaning she can easily raise an army that is 100% under her control. She can even manipulate the bodies of the dolls she creates, turning their arms into swords or making them act like humans. This gives her a huge level of flexibility as there seems to be very few limitations to how she can change people. For all we know, if one of these dolls touches Sukuna, he would instantly turn into a doll. Now, obviously Sukuna wouldn't be dumb enough to let one of these dolls touch him. What if there were a hundred, or a thousand, or ten thousand dolls swarming him? Sure, he could open his domain in order to deal with a massive crowd of dolls, but this brings me to the second reason the doll devil is so powerful. As long as there is one single doll alive, the doll devil can repopulate. So in Sukuna's case, he would have to kill every single doll under the doll devil's control without getting touched a single time in order to kill her. And honestly, that's a pretty big ask. Gojo, on the other hand, could fare a bit better for one reason. Infinity. You can't get turned into a doll if you can't get touched, so Gojo should survive longer than Sukuna. This does mean he can't use his domain for this battle, as Technique Burnout would obviously disable Infinity, but he probably wouldn't even need his domain. If he can figure out what's going on fast enough, he could kill the dolls faster than the Doll Devil can create them, as he was able to kill like a thousand transfigured humans in five minutes. And that was without red, blue, or purple, so those could help him as well. Considering Sukuna is relative to Gojo in terms of speed, he should be able to do the same thing. So while I don't think it would be an easy win for either of these two, if they both figure out what's going on soon enough, they should be able to beat the Doll Devil. The main reason I want wanted to showcase how they would do against the Doll Devil is to help illustrate how strong the world of Chainsaw Man can get, because this is by far the weakest devil we are talking about today, as the next devil we're going to talk about is the Gun Devil. Here's the issue with the Gun Devil, we've only seen its 20% form. This means we really have no idea how strong its 100% form would be or how its abilities might change. So instead, let's take a look at the 20% form, because it is still plenty powerful. To be honest though, I think this one might be easier for Gojo to defend feet than the Doll Devil was, as it's just one thing. As for Sukuna, this is kind of a bad matchup. The 20% Gun Devil attacks solely with bullets and can attack from a range of over 1500 meters. It essentially sets a condition for killing people within a certain radius before carrying out a massacre. For instance, he can shoot a bullet through the hearts of everyone that was born in certain months, or through the heads of everyone within a certain age group, or at a specific person. This means that Sukuna would be under constant, highly destructive gunfire for the entire duration of their fight. The damage the Gun Devil is capable of doing seems to be on par, if not more destructive, than Sukuna's domain, so he would basically have to withstand his own domain for the entirety of their fight. While I don't think it's impossible for Sukuna to sustain this kind of damage, he would need to use Reverse Curse Technique a lot to mitigate it, meaning he would run through his cursed energy relatively quickly. The Gun Devil is also highly durable, as it took Makima summoning like five devils to beat him, so even if Sukuna did open his own domain or used his techniques on the Gun Devil, it probably wouldn't do that much damage. Pretty much his only chance for survival is hoping that the slash that cuts the world does major damage to the gun devil in a way that limits his capabilities, as cutting off the guns on the gun devil should stop him from shooting. But even just launching the slash that cuts the world might not be easy, as he has to charge the technique with chanting and hand signs and he cannot use reverse curse technique during that time. While I don't think it's technically impossible for Sukuna to win here, I think it's very unlikely, and it would definitely be a very hard fought win, at least a harder fought win than Gojo's because Infinity should just stop the bullets. As far as we know, the bullets the Gun Devil fires are just normal bullets, so the Devil should have literally no way to damage Gojo. This is going to be a reoccurring theme against the strongest characters in Chainsaw Man. Many of them struggle to counter Infinity, because cursed weapons and domain amplification don't exist in Chainsaw Man. But there are a few that can get through it, and we'll be talking about them later. For now, I want to move on to the hybrids. This is where scaling and comparison between Jujutsu Kaisen and Chainsaw Man get a bit weird weird. Hybrids on the surface are much weaker than Sukuna and Gojo. None of them have abilities that can truly threaten either of these two, and none of them have the durability to outright survive attacks like Hollow Purple or Strong Dismantle. And yet, 
they're immortal. We've seen it time and time again, where hybrids get torn apart, sliced apart, thrown around, or poked full of holes, only to be fine a few pages later. This raises the question of whether or not Gojo and Sukuna would be able to beat these opponents that are otherwise far inferior. I think it's likely they could find a way because the power gap is so large. By beating the hybrids over and over again, Gojo and Sukuna should be able to trial and error their way into killing them without worrying too much about depleting their cursed energy pools or feeling truly threatened. I think two possible ways to kill the hybrids are potentially with Hollow Purple and the open technique in combination with Malevolent Shrine. These are the two ways Maharaga was defeated and that Shikigami needs to be killed in one hit, so I think using these methods should be somewhat effective in killing the hybrids. Hollow Purple could work if Gojo puts a lot of cursed energy behind it and makes it larger than the body of a hybrid, as they would be completely vaporized in that case and unable to regenerate. Another possible way to win is to put them in a situation where they cannot regenerate, like putting their head inside a box that is way too small to regenerate from or just eating their entire body and digesting it. Hey, it's worked for others. But that probably wouldn't work on the next strongest devil in Chainsaw Man, which is Chainsaw Man. I'm sure some of you want to debate that Chainsaw Man should be further into the video because he's stronger than some devils we haven't talked about yet, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about why these two could probably actually beat Chainsaw Man. Not easily though, it would definitely be a close and hard battle like every devil we've talked about thus far. Chainsaw Man has three main advantages that would make Gojo and Sukuna struggle. His speed, his battle IQ, and his regeneration abilities. For his speed, he was able to completely outspeed the Hell Devil, which is another extremely powerful devil. Even the hybrids could not keep up with him with the exception of Bomb, who had to use explosives to keep up with him. For his battle IQ, he just fights like a monster. Every move he makes is calculated to kill and to do so effectively. He single-handedly won a 7 on 1 and did so in the most optimal way possible. At one point in this battle, he ripped out his own heart and reformed his body around it after kicking it back to Earth in order to survive an attack from Makima, which is just a huge feat of intelligence and is the main example of his insane regeneration abilities. Coming back from just a heart is not something that anyone in Jujutsu Kaisen can do, and I don't think we've seen anyone else do it in Chainsaw Man either, but there are probably a few that can come close. Chainsaw Man is also incredibly perceptive as he was able to locate and ensnare four opponents from the middle of the sky and then successfully dismember all of them at once. He is a beast of an individual fighter, and honestly, I would love to see him go head to head with Sukuna, two four-armed beasts fighting recklessly, both incredibly intelligent in their own right. If there were ever to be a crossover between these two series, I think this is one of those fights that would just have to happen. But I do think Sukuna wins this matchup ever so slightly, mostly because of the slash that cuts the world in conjunction with his domain. Despite his regenerative abilities, Chainsaw Man can take damage, and he seems especially susceptible to strong attacks like Makima's Thousand Year Usage Spear. This makes me think an attack like Strong Dismantle would be effective against the devil as well, and in Sukuna's domain, his healing abilities would have to go towards protecting him from the constant slashes. This idea is not foolproof though, as the entire premise kind of goes to shit if Sukuna gets too damaged in his domain and it collapses. This makes me believe that this is most likely a first strike wins kind of battle. If Sukuna can open his domain and land a strong dismantle, the rest of the slashes should be enough to kill Chainsaw Man, or at least prevent him from healing and sending him into his weakened state. But if Sukuna opens his domain and gets hurt before he can kill Chainsaw Man, then he just loses. As for Gojo, well, Chainsaw Man just has no way to get through Infinity, so Gojo can just have some fun until he beats the devil. Damn, Infinity is broken. Anyway, next we have Makima. Makima vs Gojo is a fight that has been covered a lot, so I am going to keep it as brief as possible. Gojo probably wins. The main issue for him is Makima's pseudo-invincibility as a result of her contract with the Japanese Prime Minister, which allows her to transfer any of her injuries to Japanese citizens. Depending on how exactly this works, he would have to kill Makima like a hundred million times, and as a Japanese citizen himself, he would probably die in the process of killing her unless he can figure out a way to kill her that prevents her contract from activating. There seems to be two main ways he could do this, by eating her or by killing her in one shot and vaporizing her from existence. Luckily, he has just the ability to do that. Plus, Makima likely doesn't have any way to get through Infinity. In Death Battle's analysis, they claim that her force shots could get through Infinity, but I don't really think that is true, at least not based on my interpretation of them. I always thought they were just a strong burst of energy, not some sort of space ignoring shot. But I do think there is a possibility that one of the weapons she summons could ignore Infinity similar to the Inverted Spear of Heaven, as some of them do have secondary effects and she can summon some pretty powerful weapons. Regardless, even with a weapon that can go through Infinity, she has no way around Unlimited Void. So I doubt Makima really has a way to beat Gojo if he opens his domain. Sukuna, on the other hand, would have to get unconventional to beat her. See, Sukuna likely isn't considered a Japanese citizen 
citizen, considering he was alive well before the modern Japanese citizen system was created. This means he should be exempt from her damage spreading ability, meaning that if he survives long enough against Makima, he could run through all 100 million Japanese civilians, preventing her from healing and subsequently killing her. This would not be an easy task though, as Makima has a huge variety of offensive options at her disposal. If she learns Sukuna's name, she might be able to squash him like a bug. She can also use any combinations of the devils under her control to fight against him, like the fox devil, the zombie devil, and the angel devil. Sukuna would pretty much have to draw his domain if he wants a chance at killing Makima a hundred million times. This inherently puts him at risk, as Makima is capable of summoning weapons that do major damage to Chainsaw Man, meaning they would definitely pose a threat to Sukuna and could destroy his domain. But he does have another option instead of trying to kill her a hundred million times. He could just eat her. I mean, he is a cannibal, and it did work for Denji. If he opens his domain, cuts Makima to bits, and then eats her like a human tartar, that might work for him. In fact, I think it's probably his best chance at winning. And I guess this is technically a possibility for Gojo as well. Anyway, the next strongest devils are where we hit a wall with Gojo and Sukuna. It's the Primal Devils. The Primal Devils are the devils based on humanity's primal fears. They are fears that were ingrained into humanity back in the primitive ages due to the evolutionary need for survival. At this point in time, we know of three. Fire, falling, and darkness. These are the strongest beings in the Chainsaw Man universe. They have never been killed, and they have never been beaten. Even Makima has very little power compared to them, and the times they have shown up, they have created carnage that makes the Shibuya incident look like a minor car crash. Take, for instance, the Darkness Devil, who dismembered many of the strongest characters in this series in a matter of seconds and made the Doll Devil physically invincible. Or the Falling Devil, whose ability to make people fall messed up gravity so bad it created tsunamis around the globe. And that was after her appearing for just just a few minutes. Each primal devil has enough power to pretty much end humanity on Earth. And as such, I don't think Sukuna or Gojo can really stand a chance. Maybe Gojo could put up a fight against the falling devil since her abilities are mostly related to gravity and he should be unaffected by those, but these devils have so much regenerative power and so much health that even a hollow purple would do next to nothing to them. I mean, Denji completely shredded the falling devil and she was fine like two panels later. So it would probably be the same for anything Gojo throws her way. As for offenses, the darkness devil does have the ability to bypass infinity, as it can damage people directly without any kind of physical contact. We saw this most prominently when the devil made Angel bleed from his eyes and mouth just by looking at him. And considering that Gojo is stronger than Sukuna in the Chainsaw Man universe, I think it's safe to say that Sukuna would also have no chance against these devils either. But none of these are actually the strongest devil in Chainsaw Man. There is one that's stronger, and that's the Death Devil. This is confirmed by the Famine Devil, who says the Death Devil is the most feared devil of them all. But we we can't really dictate exactly what kind of matchup they would have against these two, as we haven't actually seen them yet. Regardless, it's the Death Devil, and it's stronger than the Primal Devils, so there's no reason that Gojo and Sukuna should be able to beat this. So to answer the question of can Jujutsu Kaisen's strongest beat Chainsaw Man's strongest, the answer is no. They can get close, as Makima does seem beatable by both of them, but past that, they just get completely outscaled. Thank you so much for watching, be sure to subscribe and join our Discord, and I'll see you in a few days for another video.